Hi, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. And we're gonna be painting this nightstand white. And then I'm gonna be doing something with the top. I haven't decided on the top yet, but I'm gonna be painting this white. I've already taken the hardware off, but I'm gonna start from start to finish, gonna show you every step. I know a lot of people are scared to paint with white. So we're gonna do it from start to finish, including the cleaning. So I'm gonna start it off, and I've got a little spray bottle here. I filled it up with water. Now you don't want to just use tap water right out of your sink because you don't know, know what kind of minerals or rust or anything that could be in your water. So I always use bottled water when I'm filling up my spray bottles and even my misting bottle that I use for painting, I always use bottled water uh, just to be safe. Now I'm taking my Dixie Belle White Lightning, which is a powdered concentrate, it's very strong. And I'm using a plastic spoon and I'm going to be putting now a lot, of, my spoon is wider than my opening, so a lot of it's gonna fall out. So I'll be putting two spoonfuls in here because I know a lot of it's gonna fall out. Okay, so I put about two of my little plastic spoons of cleaner in here. Put my lid back on. And then I'm gonna shake it up. Okay, if you have a little funnel, that's easier than using a spoon. <laughs> okay, so. Now we want to spray it on our piece. Okay. Getting in all the little nooks and crannies. So I got it all sprayed on there. Now I'm going to take, you can take like a t-shirt or a washcloth. Um, I'm going to use my blue shop towels to wipe it off. You can see how much dirt you're taking off your piece. This piece isn't very dirty, but it's better to, I always say it's better to be safe than sorry, do it right from the beginning, so you don't have to make corrections at the end. It's a lot easier to do your preps, your prep work correctly from the beginning than it is to try to go back and correct your mistakes afterwards. Okay, and then I'll use, I use my little paint brushes as handles to pull my doors out. And then I clean. Don't forget to clean the rim around your drawers because you're going to be painting that more than likely. Because you want your drawers to look nice when you open them. So make sure you're cleaning them as well. Okay, now I'd want to repeat that all the way around and do the top as well. That same process as I just did there. Now the next step, very important, don't skip this step. I know that you think you're clean now, but you want to make sure that you don't have any cleaning residue left on your surface before you start painting. Um, so uh, the next step is to rinse it off. And what I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm just going to mist water all over it. Checking your rag to make sure that it's looking clean. You need to spray more water. Do that. I wiped it, and as you can see, it's looking pretty clean. Um, so I wiped it all down with water, and now I'm gonna let it dry, because I want a dry surface before I start painting on this, because when this dries, I might be able to see any area that might have some residue that I might have missed, so I do want to let it dry, and then we'll start painting. Okay, so now our piece is clean and dry and ready to paint. And I'm going to make life easier on myself since I'm going to be painting this piece white. I actually, I, th I think I'm going to be using fluff. I haven't decided which shade of white I'm going to use yet, but I know I'm gonna, it's going to be in one of the white families of Dixie Belle. Um, but I'm going to make life easier on myself, and I'm going to use the Boss in White as my first, uh, first one to two coats. And this is going to prevent any bleed-throughs. This is also going to um, stop any odors. And it's just gonna make you know life easier on myself. And I always lean towards better be safe than sorry. I'm gonna 
uh, prep my piece and do what I need to first so that I'm not correcting any, anything later. So I'm using the boss in white. Since I'm painting my piece in white, it's just gonna help me out there. Okay, so I stirred up the boss and now it's ready to go. I'm gonna use a damp brush, just misting my brush, and I'm just gonna paint it right on. And you wanna put it on nice and smooth. You wanna make sure you don't have any runs. Runs or clumps, just make sure you put it on nice and neat and smooth. Don't forget to pull the drawers out. You can remove your drawers. But for me to do this on video, I'd have drawers all over. It's just easier for me to show you all in one spot. So just make sure you do the in lip of your drawers. Okay, now that I painted all the lips on the drawers, so I pulled the drawers out and I painted all the way around the lips. And then got the, the drawer fronts done, everything, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put the boss on the top because I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with the top yet. And so I don't know if I wanna put the white on there. Now if I wanted to, I could use the boss in clear. They do have a clear option. And the clear option is when I, usually I would do if I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the piece and I don't want to have white on there, um, I will put the clear on there. Now the clear doesn't dry completely clear. It will have a little bit of a hazing on it, so just so you know that. Um, and then uh, you would use the clear for that or you could use the clear for, let's say you forgot to use the boss and you painted white or you painted, um, a tan or a light color and um, you end up painting it and then the next day bleed through shows up. You can correct that by using the boss in clear and put the clear over the bleed through. Do that in two coats, let it dry and then go back over it with the paint and then you won't be able to see the bleed through. So you can use the clear for correcting any bleed throughs you have after the fact if you forgot to use the boss to start with. Um, then you use the clear. You put it on and then you paint over it. Then it won't affect your paint color so when you put your paint over the top, it will blend seamlessly. You won't be able to tell that you had a correction there. Um, but the white, this white acts like you're gonna put your first coat of white on anyway. So it's better to be safe than sorry. I put my first coat on and possibly my second is going to be with the boss in white. And then it's gonna be easy coverage when I use the actual color white of Dixie Belle that I choose. I think it's probably gonna be fluff, but I'm trying to decide between fluff, cotton, and buttercream, or sandbar, or drop cloth. <laughs> I haven't decided yet, but you'll find out when I start painting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry, let it dry with the drawers open, and then come back and I'll put a second coat on the boss, and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, I'm back. I took the drawers out because I wanted to paint inside the lips uh, so that when you open a drawer and you see in, th these insides would be white as well. So I did put some of the boss in white there as well. So everything's dried. I have two coats on everything. I have my drawers removed now and because I'm gonna paint them separate. I had them in before just so you could see the whole, what the piece looked like, but now I'm gonna be painting the drawers out so I can make sure I can get the casing, all these lips in here, mm -hmm. all covered with the paint and uh, so I won't be missing any spots. So, okay, I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle Fluff. This is a really nice white. Cotton is a really bright white and then drop cloth is a little bit more of a tan white. Fluff is the in-between. It's a nice neutral white, if that makes any sense. It's a cross between a bright white and a beigey white. So I'm using Fluff. I have fluff in my little FIFO bottle here. Shake it up. Get 
dump some out. I am using the Dixie Belle, um, this is their flat large brush. You can see it's got some red left on it, the stain from doing a red project, but it's okay, it's clean and it's damp. Okay, so I'm just going to apply with my damp brush. A nice, even coverage. And having that boss already on here in white, pretty much I'm working with a blank canvas. It's, nice, it's white already. It's not gonna take as much fluff or as much paint to cover my surface. But also, it's gonna ensure, um, if you've painted before, sometimes you might have paint, painted on a surface and as you're painting um, with a damp brush, your paint might be pulling up to show the wood underneath. That might happen to some people. Um, but having the boss on the surface before I start painting, I'm not gonna have that problem. It gives me, like I said, a great canvas to be starting with. So I'm just using this large flat brush. And getting my first coat of white on here. worried about getting paint on my top here because I'm going to be sanding that back a little bit. Um, I think I might be doing what I normally do to the tops of my pieces because I absolutely love it is I use Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain either in Espresso or Walnut. Those are my two favorite colors. Those are my go-to is when it comes to the top of my pieces. So I'll be doing that. <music> So I got the front of it, so I got, I have the front of it done. Now, before you move on to the sides, go around and look. Make sure you have no drips, no areas that you missed, but especially in no pooled up areas where uh, if you have any grooves where paint is setting in, that's kind of, um, you have excess paint, too much paint on it. Make sure, look around first before you move, move on to the next step. Because if you leave chunks of paint someplace, uh, like if it's pooled up in an area, when that dries, it's gonna leave a drip mark. So make sure you double check your areas. There is no dripping, no paint pulled up in any of my you know, nooks and crannies before I move on to the next step. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the drawers. Okay, now I'm gonna do the front of the drawer. And this has a lot of details on it. I'm gonna start by jabbing my paintbrush into those details to make sure I got paint down in there. So I don't want to accidentally miss a part and be able to see the surface I'm painting on, you know, getting missed. So I always jab my paintbrush down into those grooves first and then go back and paint over it. Getting all the nooks and crannies. about getting paint right here on the edge of my drawers because I'm going to be painting the side not the inside of my drawers I'm gonna be painting the outside so that when you open the drawers there'll be a pop of color I haven't decided on a color yet but so I'm not worried about getting paint on that part of the drawer okay now before you move on to the next drawer look around all of your areas Make sure you didn't miss anything. Make sure you don't have any paint pooled up. Okay, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna paint my sides and then I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, I wanted to show you, this is one coat over the boss. So it's gonna take one more coat because I can see a few streak marks right there. Where I didn't get it on thick enough. That's pretty good coverage. Okay. I'll let this dry and I'll go on to the second coat. Okay, so I have two coats of the white on my piece right now and two coats is all I need. And with most darker colors, you can get away with one to two coats, but when you're using white, there's not as much pigment in it um, when you're using white. So white usually takes more coats. But since I use the boss in white to get those first two coats on, my two coats of the white fluff went on beautifully. Let me show you close up. 
Okay, so this is two coats and it's still wet. Okay, now I'm gonna let these two coats dry and I'm gonna let them dry overnight. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and I'm gonna go ahead and do a top coat. Now, I wanted this piece just to be a nice, clean white and I'll be doing a, st a stain top. I'll be using the gel stain on the top. But I just wanted this piece to be a nice, clean white. I'm not gonna do anything fancy. I'm not gonna do any waxing. I'm not gonna do any glazing. I know that there's some beautiful details on these drawers that you could do some glazing. But I just wanna show you that, especially if you're new to painting furniture, you don't have to be scared of using white as long as you take the proper steps. And two, you don't have to do all the, the fancy techniques for your first piece. Being just one solid color, freshening up a piece is, can be enough. It, you're gonna have a beautiful, look at that. You're gonna have a beautiful piece no matter what. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours, I'm gonna come back, and then I'm gonna show you how to top coat white. I know a lot of you are, you, ask a lot of questions. What's going to keep my piece from turning yellow? What kind of top coat can I use on white? I'm going to come back and I'm going to answer that for you. Okay, so I'm all done. I have two coats of the fluff on here and it looks fabulous. Look at how nice and white that is. And look at how it looked before. Is its partner. This is what it looked like before and there it is now. Okay, the great thing about the Dixie Belle products are they all play nicely together. There's not a lot of rules. Um, the great thing is, is I get a lot of comments and questions about Amy. I'm painting with a light color. What do I use as a top coat because I don't want it to turn yellow? Well, all of Dixie Belle's top coats work, uh, work with the Dixie Belle paints. You don't have to worry about yellowing. You can use their top coat in flat, satin, or gloss, or you can use one of their waxes or you can use their gator hide. You're not gonna get the yellowing. That is the fantastic thing about Dixie Belle. They're, you don't have, they take the risk out of it. Everything works well together. So I'm choosing the flat today. Um, I kind of want that wax look, but I don't want to use wax. So I'm using the flat top coat. Like I said, there's also satin and gloss. And I'm using just a sponge applicator. Now I'm gonna dampen my sponge applicator and make sure all dog hairs are removed. <laughs> I have three dogs, so I always have to make sure the hair is off there. Okay, so I dampen my brush, and it's so easy. All you do is just wipe it on. Making sure you don't have any runs, and no, product pooled up in, in your, your grooves. You don't want any pooled up product. So just make sure it's a nice thin coat and just wipe it on with your sponge brush. You can take your drawers out if you want. I left the drawers in because I wanted you to be able to see the whole piece together. Make sure you don't have any dust getting into your piece. And then once you get it on, leave it. Don't go back over it until it's completely dried because you don't want any drag marks. If you look at it at an angle, you'll be able to see if you've missed any spots. I have such bright lights on it, it's hard to tell. to it. Just apply it, one, th one thin coat with your sponge brush, dampen it slightly when you start, and then let it dry. This will take maybe a half hour to dry, and then I'm going to turn around and put one more coat on it, and I'll, I'll be good to go. So I'm going to do the sides, and then I'll be back, and we'll start doing the top. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso. I love the color Espresso. It's going to match the knobs or the hardware that I have on here. Um, and the other color that I really love is walnut, and they also have the color cherry. Uh, but I'm using espresso today, and 
I keep these handy, these little can openers, paint can openers. And I'm going to stir it up a little bit. Now, I'm gonna show you a close up. Gel stain is not like your normal stains. It's exactly what it says it is, it's gel. See, it's like a pudding. It's a pudding consistency. It's not watery. It's the consistency of chocolate pudding. Okay, and I am wearing the gloves because this is one of the only products that Dixie Belle has that is oil-based. So this is oil-based, so that, hence that's why I'm wearing the gloves. And I'm gonna be using these little sponge applicators. I like to use these, I get them at my local hardware store. They're just called HDX staining pads. And they are nice and smooth. They're like a terry cloth type surface. See how smooth they are? This is what I like to use to apply my, um, my gel stain. I believe they're like four bucks for eight of them, but I use these for um, buffing my pieces and for applying the gel stain. So, like I said, this is the espresso. I'm just going to, I'm gonna squeeze my pad a little bit so I can dip it in here. And then I've got some gel stain on there. Okay, I'm gonna start in the middle and then work my way out that way and that way. The only reason I said work my way from the middle out is if I have some excess on my pad, I don't want it splattering onto my piece. So I start in the middle when I have a bunch on my, on my sanding pad, just so I don't splatter it onto a piece next to me. Just gently glide it on. You don't want to overwork it, but you can tell You don't want to overwork it, but you can tell um, when it's been worked enough. It'll start dragging and being a little bit dry, but doesn't that clean up the surface really well? Gives it a fresh, new appearance. I got to dip again. And I'm just putting just a little goop on there. Okay. And I'll more than likely be doing probably two coats because I want it to be dark. But this just richens up the top of the piece. Along these edges. Just wiping long strokes. If I have any heavy areas where it's heavier than the rest, just evening it out, dragging along my sides, and voila. All, oopsie, then I got a fuzz from my jacket. Okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, so I mean, this does, this looks great. Look at how easy it was to use the gel stain. I was scared to use gel stain until I used it for the first time, and after that I was like, what have I been waiting for? This gives you such rich color, and it can be put on top of any finish. Um, it can be put over paint. It can be put over, you know, like the, this factory finish, or it can be used on raw wood. This gel stain is just amazing. And you saw how easy it was just to give a little facelift to my table to, or my uh, nightstand top here. Okay, but here's the rules. I'm gonna let this dry for a couple hours, and then I'm gonna come back and put a second coat on, and I'll show you. But you, with a gel stain, since it is an oil-based product you need to wait three days before you put a top coat on it. You want it to fully dry. It may feel like it's dry on the top when you're touching it, but you really need to wait three days before you put a top coat on it. With this, I would normally put gator hide on top of it. I love gator hide on any top of my piece. Every piece I do, I always top it with gator hide because I want my tops to be waterproof and water repellent. So my tops are always done in gator hide. So what I would do with this piece is I would, I'm gonna let this sit for three days and then I'm just gonna put two coats of gator hide on top and I'll be done. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And look at how gorgeous this finish came out. This is two coats of the No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso. And um, you saw me put on the first coat. I applied the second coat exactly the same way and two coats is enough. I've got a beautiful, rich finish, which I'll take some close-up pictures of first. 
And then, um, but in a beautiful finish, and it matches my oil rub bronze knobs, which is my goal. So two coats was enough to, to get the matching color. Okay, but now it's time to put the gator hide on. Now the gator hide, you know, the rest of the body, you saw me put the top coat in flat. You know, because it doesn't get as much wear and tear. It gets wear and tear, but not as much as a top of a surface does. I always use the gator hide uh, for the tops of all of my surfaces. Because of the fact that water is going to be put on here, uh, glasses, silverware, a lot of use, stuff getting dropped on here, gator hide is tough and it's waterproof and water repellent. So I'm going to be doing the gator hide. I have a blue application sponge in here. Um, I use these so often that you get probably. I get about three uses out of each sponge, and I wash it in between um, in between uses. When I say sponges, it's these blue applicator sponges. Let me show you close up. So these blue applicator sponges is what I use to apply my top coat gator hide on my tabletops. But when you use them too often, um, and I have washed them in, in between, you might get some little white dusting in your finish. So you don't want that. So what I do is I put a nylon sock over it. I slide it in there. So I'm gonna, t okay, so I'm gonna tug on my sock. See, I got the sponge in there. Okay, so now I got, got it inside the sock. I'm gonna, I have excess sock here and excess sock here. I'm going to tie it behind, making a little handle for me, and also it hides um, these extra bits so they don't accidentally get, uh, fall down and get into our top coat. So there we go. See, I have a little handle now. So this is how I'm gonna be applying my top coat. I have, it's a nylon sock. It's a nylon sock over a sponge and that will reduce any of the little old bits of top coat that are in the sponge or if your sponge is falling apart, it will keep those bits from getting onto your surface. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to, yeah, my, Okay, my, ga uh, my gator hide is stirred and mixed up well. So I know all the contents of the um, top coat are sitting at the bottom. I did mix it up. If you have it, in, it still in the container, just take a popsicle stick and stir it up nice and good. Okay, I'm gonna squirt it into there. Okay, now I'm gonna take my little misting bottle and I'm just gonna spray a little bit of water. Just a little bit, bit of water. So it's not wet, it's just damp. Okay, just so it slides easier. Okay, I'm gonna dip into my gator hide. See, I got my little handle from the, the knots. See how that, that's too much. I'm gonna wipe it off. There we go. And I'm going to apply it in thin coats. A little goes a long way. If you put, on too, if you put it on too heavy, then you might get some cloudiness or some streaks. So I made, what, one, two, three, four passes before I, I dipped again. Oh, there. Look at the light. Okay. And unless you have pooling or their dog here, um, if you miss a spot, we'll go back to it after it's dried. But right now I'm just making sure I have no spots that have pooled up where it's really thick because those are harder to correct when they dry. And a little goes a long ways. As you see, I only dipped twice. Okay, okay. So I put it on very thin, let me show you. I applied it very thinly. But I have the entire thing covered. But since you saw, I only dipped twice. So I, I mean, I went as far as I could go with the top coat and the sponge as possible before I dipped again. Okay, you know, you can see my reflection in here. This finish, I love this finish. Now I will come back and show you as soon as this dries. Now, in the meantime, I am going to rinse my sponge. I do not put this in a bag and let it sit there until my next application. I will wash the sponge out after every use. That will reduce the amount of buildup or those little white flakies from a top coat being caught in the sponge fibers. Okay, so as soon as this dries, I will come back and I will show you what it looks like after the first coat dries and then how I apply the second coat. 
Okay, so here's the first coat. Let me get at an angle. See, you will see, this is the, only the first coat though. You'll see some streaking where I got it thinner in some areas and just right in others. And so I wanted you to see that because that's some of the, where people panic is when they see this. But we're gonna fix that. This is only coat one. And you really, with Gator Hide, wanna do two to three coats at least. So let's do the second coat and let me also give you some tips. Okay, first of all, I washed my, I washed my sponge out. So my sponge is, I mean, it's not wet, but it's damp. Um, so, so I rinsed it out right after I used it so it was clean and then I wrung it out and then I even cleaned the sock too as well. So I won't be spraying this and dampening it down with my little sprayer because it's already damp as it is now. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my second coat. Okay, put my little hand inside my little handle that I make. Dip, wipe off. There we go. And make sure I have no dust on the piece. And reapply again. Have a good lighting so that you can see if you're missing any areas because you don't want to go back over any spot and cause a drag mark. That will also give you the streaks is if you go back and, and have to touch up like I just have to right there. If you have to go back and touch up any areas, that will also give you some streaks and that's with any top coat that you use. Okay, so this is two coats and I have not sanded between coats. Let me get it caught in the light so you can see. See, you can see a few streaks in there. And I'm gonna show you how to resolve that. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna use the 3M finishing sponge and I'm gonna gently go with the grain. Or actually, not, it's not really that, that gentle. But I'm going with the grain and you can see in the light, anywhere you have streaks, you're able to kind of sand them out to even out your finish. So now you can already see the difference right here versus right here. The sheen is different. So just take this finishing pad all the way to the edge. And the reason I do that, I don't do this on the first coat, I'll do this on the second and the third coat, is because on the first coat, I don't want to accidentally sand through the gel finish if I get heavy handed and then have to touch up my gel finish, the gel stain. So I'm just gonna go all the way down. I'm looking in the light and you'll see, you'll, you'll see that you're evening out any texture differences or sheen differences because you've got it heavier in one spot than in, a, in another. And I'm just gonna do this all the way down my piece. Okay, and to stay in with the grain, you'll see some white hazing, which is just the dust from the finish. And if you have two, at least two coats on here, you don't have to worry, you're not gonna get down to the gel stain unless you're like extremely hard pushing. Okay, I'm just gonna gently wipe off the dust, going with the grain. And then you can use a, a t-shirt, or I like to use my favorite. These are the little staining pads that I use for actually using the gel stain. I also use these for buffing when I wax and um, for cleaning, cleaning surfaces, I use these for everything. So, going with the grain. Getting all the dust off. Now this is how, this has got two coats on it, but look at how water repellent this um, gator hide is. So I'm gonna wipe it, and you're gonna see the water like bubbles up. It does not, oops. The water bubbles up. You can see that, I mean, it's definitely water. It's resisting the water, the top coat is. So I should be good with just the two coats now. So I'm cleaning it with the grain. As soon as this dries, I'm gonna show you how it looks. I'm just right now, I'm just buffing all the dust out of any grooves. Cause that dust is white, so it'll have a haze. So right now I'm just, like I said, just drying it. And all the water off. See that shine? You can see the reflection? Okay, let me move the camera and I'll show you. 
Okay, there's the light against it. See, all of the streaks are gone. Okay, it's all done. Look at the sheen on this. Let's see my reflection in it. I love using the Gator Hide. Now this has got the two coats of the Gator Hide on there and all I had to do is buff it with the 3M finishing pad and look at, no streaks. And a beautiful, beautiful finish. Okay, I'm gonna stage these two, uh, two nightstands and get some pictures taken of them and post them at the end. And now it's all up to you. What are you waiting for? You don't know what you can do until you get started. So pick out that piece or go purchase a piece and start painting. Okay, well this is Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.